Deep in the high security section of the State Library of New South Wales lives a chest with an extraordinary story. If it could talk, it would tell us a magical tale worthy of Pandora. And it all starts with a spooky Scottish castle. In 1986, Alan Davies was studying in the UK when he received a tip-off about a chest of possible significance to Australia sitting idle in Strathallan Castle. And I'm sort of yelling out for somebody to come down and basically you could have expected some guy to come out of <laughs> it was It was a very surreal experience, I have to say. Where was it? Um, it was in a, a room quite towards the rear of the castle. Um, this junk room. A junk room? Absolutely a junk room, just oh. piled to the ceiling with 19th century mahogany furniture. Did you realise that it was something particularly valuable for Australia's history? Oh, absolutely. This was very early. This is early 19th century. Back in 1818, New South Wales was little more than a jail without bars for Britain's overflowing criminal population. <coughs> It was renowned for its brutality, but amid the pain and despair, something unexpected happened. In Newcastle, a banknote forger and two convict cabinet makers began work on a secret project. With the most rudimentary equipment and materials, they created an exquisite cabinet. It was presented to Governor Macquarie as a way to win his favour. And here it is. I cannot wait to show you this. Now, at first, you might think, what's all the fuss about? Looks like a fairly unassuming travelling chest, the sort of thing military commanders in the early 19th century might drag around on campaigns, and that's what it is, a piece of campaign furniture. But when you open it up, this box takes on a life of its own. The chest is a museum in miniature that has perfectly preserved the natural world of colonial times. It's filled with birds so vibrant you'd swear they were put there yesterday, as well as displays of shells and seaweed and, of course, insects. Have a look at this. We have butterflies and moths and a dragonfly and a Christmas beetle. And there's even a huntsman spider here who looks like he's been freshly knocked down from your laundry ceiling. I'll bet this big Aussie spider gave a few Scots the heebie-jeebies when he got there. So how on earth did such a unique national treasure end up abandoned in a Scottish castle? Well, in 1822, Governor Macquarie returned home to the Isle of Mull in Scotland. When he died, all his worldly possessions passed to his only son, Lachlan Jr., a gambler and a drunk who squandered the lot. To pay off his debts, the entire Macquarie family fortune, including the chest, was then given to the Drummond family of Strathallan Castle, which was later sold to Englishman Sir William Roberts. And there it lay for over 150 years, until it was discovered by Alan Davies. I sort of dragged it across to the, the window to try and get a bit more light on it. And then as I started to open it up, it just got more and more complex. And I realised if I'm to document this thing, I have to do it piece by piece. But at the same time, I think, oh, I don't have enough film. This is extraordinary. So do you think Sir William Roberts had any idea what this was, this, this bizarre piece of furniture? No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, to him, it was just some colonial piece of furniture that he used to jump on and off as a kid. He know? jumped on and off as a kid? Absolutely. And that, uh, his, his the reason it's got a crack across the top of it. He apologised to me <laughs> for that. Is that right? Absolutely bizarre, isn't it, when you consider how much it's worth today. The German word for these cabinets is Wunderkammer, cabinets of wonder. And I think that describes the Macquarie Collector's chest brilliantly. But it's not just the contents that are wondrous. It's the fact that this work of art was born out of such despair and brutality. 